Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you get the most for your Jeep. Hi, I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. In this week's episode, we're going to look at why you might want a diesel heater in a box and what's involved in making one. And then in our tip segment, we're going to talk about all the things that you need to consider if you were thinking of doing the same. So stick around. So before we start this week's video, I just want to give a shout out to a certain YouTuber, a guy named Slim Potato Head. He said one time, I don't make mistakes, I make experiments. And it's in that spirit that I embarked on making a diesel heater in a box. So bear with me if uh, there are some bumps along the way. And there's another YouTuber in Australia, whose link I'll put in the video description, who is an expert on diesel heaters. He's got a series of about 14 videos where he goes over all the elements in depth. And all the information I have isn't from personal experience, it's from learning from other YouTubers. So I'll pretty much be summarizing what I've learned in this application. And if you're interested, you can always check out the links in the description section to see those videos. So now, why would somebody want to have a diesel heater in a box? Well, as the show implies, it's about getting the most for your money so you can get the most for your Jeep. And one of the things you want to do to get the most from your Jeep is to go camping in it and go ice fishing. And if you do those kinds of things, you're going to want to make sure that you're comfortable. And making sure that you're warm is one of those things. And of course, you could do it by having a hat on and some gloves. But if you're out in the environment all day and if you're camping and sleeping or out ice fishing you might want a little extra for some warmth there are some things like the uh, propane type heaters uh, like the mr buddy heater i have one of those as well and they're great they do provide you warmth but those are usually inside your tent or in your jeep or your van or in your ice fishing hut and you have the combustion concerns and levels of oxygen concerns but also propane gives off a lot of moisture so if you're in your van or say in your jeep and you're using a buddy heater to keep warm well you're going to have a condensation issue you have to contend with and you have to make sure windows cracked open and all those sort of things but a diesel heater is a dry heat and you can of course mount your diesel heater within your vehicle with an exhaust and an intake going out of the Jeep. However, the nice thing about the portable diesel heater in a box concept is that the combustion and everything could be located outside of your vehicle and you could just have a duct bringing the heat inside and it'll be a dry heat. You won't have any condensation concerns to worry about. And the other cool thing about the diesel heater in a box outside of the Jeep is that you can put a splitter on your ductwork and heat another person's tent or Jeep as well. So there's a lot of flexibility in that concept. Before I carry on, let's have a visual of what I'm talking about. So this is it. This is the diesel heater. Underneath, you have got your air intake for your combustion as well as your fuel intake and then your exhaust pipe as well. And all those things could be ducted outside of your vehicle if you were to mount this inside your vehicle. For example, some people have mounted these in their Jeeps and they've run lines from the exhaust up to the outside of their Jeeps. The thing about that is now you have it in your Jeep full time and you might not need this all the time. So if you're not interested in carrying a diesel heater system in your Jeep full time, the portable diesel heater in a box option comes into play here. So this is it. This is the concept, the diesel heater in a box. When you buy the heater, it comes with a gas tank. This is a 10 liter fuel tank. And this is just a box that I had lying around at home. I'll find a similar one online and put a link to it in the description section if you're interested in doing the same. But you could use any box you want, a toolbox or anything you have at home, or you can just order it if you needed to. But let's have a look here. I'll place it down on the ground so you can have an idea of what we're talking about. So imagine if you will, you're camping in your Jeep and you have your portable heater in a box right here. Now the fuel tank in the box are assembled. That's just one little compact unit. It's everything you need right here. And I'll show you some visuals of the concept. But there would be a duct work coming out of the box and into an adapter here in the window. And you would have dry heat running in your Jeep all night. And the nice thing about these diesel heaters is that they just sip on the fuel. They're very 
fuel efficient and you could tell how much fuel you'll have by just looking at the fuel tank unlike on propane type heaters where it's hard to tell how much fuel you have or know how long it'll last with these kind of heaters these will go a whole weekend and not even use a whole tank and you could run them all day so really those are just a few of the reasons why you might want a diesel heater in a box let's have a look at what would be involved in the assembly of this thing well a quick unboxing shows all the parts that come with the unit the large fuel tank the instruction booklet the mounting plate the pump the controller the heater some exhaust pipes and fasteners so in an effort to see how all these pieces work together let's get a quick appreciation of how the system works well a good place to start is the heater itself the process begins with a 12 volt source heating the glow plug at the combustion chamber when a set temperature is reached fuel is then introduced to the system as well as fresh air and then we have combustion and the byproducts of the combustion exit through the exhaust pipe an internal fan draws fresh air into the heater box the fresh air enters the unit and then as it passes the combustion chamber begins to heat up and then exits the unit as fresh hot air so with this understanding of how everything's supposed to work together let's have a look at our design for our portable diesel heater in a box the plan is to have the large fuel tank mounted to the outside of the box the outside of the box will have vents on the top and the bottom to permit flow of air even convection of air through the unit the holes behind those vents will have paper filters to help control the dust you can see everything fits into the box nicely let's first talk about the fresh air intake for the combustion using the pipe provided we connect to the fresh air intake and run the filter up to the top of the box the fuel line comes in from the bottom of the fuel tank through the box which then connects to the filter and then to the pump and then into the fuel inlet using the corrugated metal pipe provided connect it to the heater's exhaust and then to the muffler and then feed the muffler through the flange so that the exhaust leaves the box the holes where the exhaust and the fresh hot air leave the box will be fitted with quick connects to help direct duct work the duct with the fresh hot air can be split into two if you wanted to heat two units and then the large diameter exhaust pipe will help direct the flow of the exhaust away from the intake of the box so in concept it seems like it'd be a pretty nice unit but there's a lot of things that you have to keep in mind if you wanted this to function efficiently without any issues. Let's take a look in this week's tip segment on the kinds of things you have to take into account if you're going to assemble something like this. Now for some cheaper, cheaper tips. So here are some special tips if you were thinking of doing an installation like this. The intake for the air comes with a filter, but it's really just the screen. Your design should include some type of paper filter so that you can keep dust out of the combustion chamber. Here's some tips for installing the fuel system. When installing the fuel system, make sure that from the tank you first connect the filter, the pump, and then to the inlet. And there's conflicting information out there on the angle of rest of your pump, so go with what's in your manual. The white fuel line is to be joined to those items with the black fuel line provided. There's to be no gap between the white fuel line and the item to which you're joining. I'll explain that further in next week's video. And finally, some exhaust tips. Pun intended. Make sure that the exhaust has a vertical orientation with the weep hole at the bottom for condensation. Be sure to use high temperature silicone sealant at all the joints to prevent exhaust leaks from being in the box since that's also where your fresh air intake is. Sticking to that point, make sure whatever design you have has a way to carry the exhaust fumes away from your intake. Okay, 
so that's a lot of tips to consider. It's time to construct our diesel heater in a box. And if you like what you've heard so far, how about giving this video a thumbs up and possibly share it with somebody else you know who might be interested in the same thing. And if you don't want to miss the next video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the alert bell so you'll be notified when it's released. But now, let's hear from our subscribers. And now for subscribers tips. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, just a tip. Try to buy stuff that will work on DC or USB because the AC inverter uses up power to convert 12 volts to 110 volt and that is power you'll never get back. Signed, Greg H. Hey Greg, thank you so much for your subscriber tip after watching the Jackery for my Jeep video. That's a great tip because I could use a USB fan, for example, in the interior of the Jeep when I'm camping in there at night time in the summer and use my battery more efficiently. Thanks for the tip. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. We hope that you found this episode interesting. Until next week, be well, stay safe, take care.